جمال الوجود بذكر الإله وتصفو الحياة بنور هدى جمال الوجود بذكر الإله وتصفو الحياة بنور هدى Effective communication is important in every type of relationship. We all want to feel heard, understood, connected and supported in our conversations. Between a husband and a wife, it is essential that they listen to each other's fears and challenges and find ways to navigate through them. When addressing problems with their children, it is important for them to portray a united front. Teenagers, even those who are not disrespectful, will push boundaries and talk back when they feel that they have been caught out doing something wrong. Problem solving skills are lacking in the wider community, but a certain degree of tact and rationality is crucial when advising one's children. It was narrated from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that a man said to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Advise me." Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Do not get angry." He repeated the question several times and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Do not get angry." Narrated by Bukhari. جمال الوجود بذكر الإله وتصفو الحياة بنور هدى. The following Saturday, Tasneem and Zaid are in the kitchen having breakfast when a sleepy looking Dayan walks in. Zaid has told Tasneem about the phone call from Mulana Zaid earlier in the week regarding Dayan skipping his class. They have both decided to wait until the school week is over so that they can confront their son on the matter. Salams. Oh, oh. I'm still so tired. This has been a long week. Dayan, sit down. Mommy and I would like to talk to you. Oh, um, I didn't do anything. You know very well that you did. Tayan, you've been bunking his class? Molana Ismail called me on Thursday. He told me that you've skipped class three times already. Um, but... Daddy and I are very upset. Why did you do such a thing? I... I don't know. The other boys were going out and they invited me to join them and... So it was you that I seen leaving the mall the other day when I was doing site inspections. And where were you the other two times? Um, just... Just hanging around the, at the park. Dayan, this is uncalled for. You know how important it is to be consistent in youth class. When we went to see Molana Ismail, you promised to obey the rules of the class. Dayan, have you forgotten that Allah is watching you? How are you going to complete at this rate, my boy? I'm, I'm sorry. And who are these other boys that you're hanging out with? You haven't even brought them home. What if they're druggies or criminals? They're not druggies. Mom, they just smoke. And I don't think any of them have a criminal record. They're just a bit off track religiously. So I'm trying to teach them about Islam. That's not your call, Dayan. I don't want you hanging around with these boys who are encouraging you to bunk his class. But, Mommy, these are my only friends here. We're in Rosewood for almost a month now. And these guys are the only ones I really get along with. Dayan, Mommy's trying to say that if they are the ones keeping you away from Madrasa. These are not the type of people you should be hanging out with. Mommy's a fine one to talk. Maybe she should take her own advice. Son, what do you mean? Mommy's doing Pilates classes with a male instructor. Did you know they're dead? <sighs> yes, she told me. But it's not how you think it is. He teaches him from behind the screen. So he has no contact with the ladies, boy. Do you really believe that, Daddy? With a name like Rusky? Tayan, are you trying to accuse me of something here? Mommy! Since we've moved here, you've become a different person. You always wanted a posh lifestyle, but now it's all you care about. And now that you're an influencer, you seem to have forgotten that you have three teenage children to take care of. All you're interested in is making TikTok videos and how many likes and followers you have on social media. How dare you, Diane? You... Diane, get back here right now. Tasneem, leave him. I'll speak to him when he comes down a bit later. How can you just let him leave, Zaid? After he spoke to me like that? He was out of line speaking to you in that manner. But what he said about... Uh... What he said about what? N- n- nothing. It-, it-, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. 
Zaid is angry at Dayan for speaking to Tasneem like that. Dayan is not usually disrespectful and Zaid knows that he will have to address the issue with him later. But the truth of his son's word ring in his ears. He fears that his wife has fallen into the trap of social media. He has noticed recently that Tasneem has become more obsessed with her appearance, her profile on Instagram and her TikTok videos. But he did not realize that the children were also aware of it and that they are bearing the brunt of their mother's new obsession. Said wishes that he could talk to Tasneem about it. But after the confrontation with the Yarn, he knows that his wife will not take kindly to his advices and remonstrations. Dana Rashid is at a coffee shop at the mall meeting a woman by the name of Asma. Her grandson has accompanied her and he tactfully excuses himself and goes to sit at another table while the two elderly people get to know each other. So Rashid bhai, have you been to see a lot of possible matches already? No, actually only two so far. And you didn't find either of them suitable? Well, mm, not really. Mm, the coffee here is lovely. So is the tea? Rashid bhai, how long has it been since your wife has passed away? Just over a year. Aisha was one of the first few people to get COVID and sadly it went straight to her lungs. We thought she would survive it. But before we knew it, she had trouble breathing and we had to admit her into hospital. So she passed away in hospital? Yes. She was getting better after staying in the hospital for 10 days. And we really thought that she would be discharged on the day. But I had gone in during visiting hours to see her and sadly she just had a heart attack. There was nothing that anyone could do to stop it. It was the will of Allah. At least she didn't suffer for long. And you're so lucky that you were with her at the end. You're right. So Asma, how did you lose your husband? Oh, I didn't lose my husband. We got divorced. Oh, uh, I, I'm sorry, I thought. Don't be sorry. Abu was a good for nothing. He got retrenched soon after we got married and he expected me to support him. Huh. I was working so hard at the jewelry shop and he was sitting at home using up all my money. I put up with him for five years, but then I got clever and I kicked him out. Oh, shame. That's terrible. Yes. Oh, there's Yunus, my ex-husband. Uh, who's Yunus? I thought you said your ex-husband's name was Abu. Yes, that was my second ex. Hang on. Yunus, over here. I'll introduce you. Assalamu alaikum, Asma. How are you? I haven't seen you in ages. Walikum salam. I'm good, alhamdulillah. Since the kids are all grown up and married, there isn't really any need for us to meet, is there? Right, right. And who's this? Don't tell me you are on the lookout for another husband, Asma. <laughs> well, why not? I'm still young and fit. I think it's time I settle down again. Yunus, this is Rashid. Rashid Bai, this is my first husband, Yunus. Oh! You have been married twice. Actually, thrice. I had another husband between Yunus and Abu. But sadly, he was killed in a hijacking shortly after we got married. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. And um, you have children from all three marriages? Just from the first and the third. Yunus and I have four kids, all grown up and married. And I had two kids from Abu. They're much younger, both still in high school. And also, I have 15 grandchildren. Alhamdulillah. Dada Rashid was getting along well with Asma, who is a very easy-going person. But he is stunned to learn of the many children, grandchildren and ex-husbands that Asma has. He feels overwhelmed at the thought of getting involved with a woman who has such a lot of baggage. At his age, he's not willing to bite off more than he can chew. David has taken Sarah to a park. They have been out twice already in the past two weeks and Sarah is becoming more comfortable with him. She has fallen into the habit of lying to her parents about who she is with and where she is going. She spends all of her free time with David, even her breaks at school, and she thinks she may be falling in love with him. This is such a beautiful park. But you're even more beautiful, Sarah. Can you take your scarf off? 
There isn't anyone around, and I'd love to see your hair. Um, all right, but just for a little while. Sorry, your hair is gorgeous. You really shouldn't hide it away under that scarf all the time. Um, thanks, but my parents would never allow me to leave the house without a scarf. Where do they think you are today? I told them I'm coming to a park with some of my friends. My mum was fine with it. She's so distracted nowadays that I think if I told her I'm going to the moon, her only response would be to tell me not to come home too late. Daddy looked as if he wanted to question me, but then he didn't say anything. At least they're worried about where you are. That shows that they care about you. Don't all parents care about their children? Perhaps, but mine aren't really too bothered. You haven't really spoken about your parents or your upbringing for that matter. I don't know much about your personal life, David. I'm not keeping any secrets, Sarah. What would you like to know? Well, I've told you so much about my family. But I don't know anything at all about yours. There isn't really much to tell. I'm an only child and neither of my parents have siblings. So I don't have that whole extended family thing going on like you do. Oh, that must have been tough growing up. I mean, all the pressure was on you, right? I suppose, but my parents are like totally open-minded. They pretty much let me do whatever I want to. Wow, that's so cool. I wish my parents were like that. I think Muslim parents are pretty strict, aren't they? Especially with their daughters. My dad is Jewish and my mum is Christian, but neither of them are very religious, although they both did stick to their religion. So what religion do you follow, David? I mean, if your parents are from different faiths, do you get to choose which one to follow? Neither, actually. My mum and dad didn't ever compel me to follow religion, you know? Um, so if you're not Christian or Jewish, what are you? I'm agnostic. Zara is shocked and confused at David's lack of religious belief. She has grown up with Islam and she cannot understand a person having no belief in Allah or following any type of religion. Although she enjoys spending time with David, she suddenly feels unsure about getting involved with a boy who follows no particular faith. Zara fakes a headache and asks him to take her home. The following Monday, on a wet and rainy morning, Dada Rashid is sitting at the kitchen table drinking his tea. Aziza joins him for breakfast before leaving for her madrasa class. The rain is really coming down. Be careful on the roads this morning. I will, Abba. Luckily, madrasa is just a few blocks away. Abba, there's something I wanted to speak to you about. Um... I'm worried about the girls. Ah, you mean Sarah and Zamira? Gee, Abba, they're both getting caught up in things that they know are wrong. Sarah is tutoring a boy in her class, and she's making TikTok videos. I suppose now that they're living in a north. It was to be expected, Aziza. You know how important it is to be in the correct environment? Yes, you're right. But what can we do to help them? I wish we could bring them back here, but that's impossible. Their life is with their parents. Have you spoken to the Tasnima about it? <sighs> I tried, but it didn't go down too well. I've spoken to the girls and tried to warn them about the harms of what they're doing. But uh, I think my advice is falling on deaf ears. I will give the girls a call. Maybe I can guide them in, shall Aziza has to rush off to class, so she kisses her father and leaves. After pondering over their conversation for a little while, Dada Rashid gets up to put his mug into the sink. Not noticing the small puddle of water on the floor, he steps on it and feels his foot slipping from under him. He tries to grab onto the countertop but loses his balance and crashes to the floor. He cries out in pain but there's nobody to help him. And as his head thuds against the floor, Dada Rashid loses consciousness.